What's up everyone, welcome back. I'm Nick, this is Swiftful Thinking. In this quick video, we're gonna look at the mask modifier. Now this is a little less common, but it's a lot of fun, it's really useful, so I wanted to introduce you guys to it quickly. What we're gonna do is build a quick little rating component where we can rate something from one to five stars. You've seen this in so many applications, but we're gonna look at how to use it with a mask modifier so that we can animate the mask on top of the actual view. If you're totally unfamiliar with masking, it's actually pretty simple. Uh, basically, we have one view that is on the bottom, then another view that's on the top, and then we can mask the top view so that it conforms to the same shape as the bottom view. So in this video, we're gonna have a bottom view with some stars and the top view, which is gonna be a rectangle, and we're gonna mask that rectangle to take the shape of the stars. It sounds a little complicated, but it's actually pretty easy to implement. We're gonna walk through and I'm gonna make it as easy as possible for you guys. And the end product here is definitely a usable component that you could definitely use in your production apps. I'm excited, I hope you're excited. Let's take a look. Welcome back everyone. I'm in Xcode of course. Let's right click the navigator, create a new file. It's gonna be a Swift UI view. Let's call this one Mask Bootcamp. Go ahead and click Create. And once you're inside, click resume on the canvas. Let's get coding. This is gonna be a fairly simple, easy video. Um, this is not something that you use a lot, but I wanted to just briefly cover it because not a lot of people know about it and it's pretty powerful in Swift UI. So let's start out our view here very simply. Let's create a Z stack. And in the Z stack, let's add a H stack. Inside the H stack, let's add a image with a system name. Let's give it a star dot fill. We see we can see our star on the screen. Let's make it a little bigger. Let's give it a font of a large title. Let's give it a dot foreground color of dot gray. And then I want to put five stars on the screen. So let's actually do a for each, and we're going to use the range. We're gonna do from one dot dot less than six. So from one to five, click enter. Uh, this will be the index. We're gonna pass in the image with the font and the foreground color here. So now we should see five stars on our screen. And we're just gonna build out a little rating indicator that you've seen on so many apps. So when there's a rating, I want it to be highlighted up to that rating. So if it was maybe three stars, I want the first three stars to be yellow and then the last two would be gray instead of them all being gray. So let's do an at state var. Let's call it rating of type int. And right now let's just set it equal to three. And first let's do this the beginner way without the mask. And we'll say, we'll change the foreground color uh, based on the rating. So we'll say, so let's start with uh, if rating is equal to the index. So remember this index is the same number as the star number. So index one, two, three, four, five. So if the rating is equal to the index, so if the rating is three and the index is three, question mark, we'll do color.yellow. Otherwise, color.gray. I look at the canvas, I'm gonna zoom out here a little bit just to make this bigger. Um, and if you look at the canvas, we can now see that the middle star is uh, yellow because the rating is three and that index is three. But we want it to actually be all of these stars up to and including number three. So we could just change this rating to uh, greater than or equal to the index. So now we have the three stars. If I change this to two stars, this should update two stars. We can make it four stars and click resume. So all we need to do is change the rating and then we'll change the number of the stars. So we'll do, we'll add an on tap gesture. And when we tap on a star, let's just set the rating equal to the index. So if I click resume and I start clicking around here, we can now change the rating and this works perfectly. If I zoom in here and I really look at this though, you'll see that when I click from one star to five stars, it jumps to five stars and it jumps to three stars. It jumps to one star. It doesn't like uh, animate to five stars. 
So this looks fine and a lot of apps are probably fine with this UI, but we're practicing here to be expert developers and we can make this look even better by using a mask instead. So I'm going to start by making this entire H stack a variable. So at the underneath the body, we'll do private var. We'll call this stars view of type some view. Open the brackets. I'm just going to cut this H stack here, paste it into the stars view. And I'll add a stars view, which is that same view back up here. Let's click resume. Should still work, looks the same. Let's take the logic out of here and just leave this back to color gray. So all the stars are always gray. So what we're gonna do on the stars view is add a dot overlay. And now I did a whole video on overlays, so you should understand how they work. It's basically a view that is going on top of this view. And we can see right now it just has placeholder. Uh, but for the overlay content, let's make it a rectangle. And the rectangle is black right now and it's covering all of the stars. And what we can do is take this rectangle and mask it to the stars view so that the rectangle takes the shape of the stars view. So on this rectangle, I can call dot mask. And then we need a masking view here and I'm gonna pass in stars view. And now our black rectangle, so if I comment this out, we have a black rectangle. If I add the mask, that rectangle masks into a, a black box that basically looks like the stars. And if I change this with a foreground color of dot yellow, we can now get our yellow stars back. And now we just need to update the width of the rectangle so that it is it is as wide as basically the rating needs to be. So if it was one star, we want the width of the rectangle to be one fifth of the full size. So if I take out this mask and we just look at it again, right now it's 100% of the size. And we know there are five stars. So if we had if we had a rating of four, we would want this rectangle to be four out of five, four fifths of its current size. And because we don't know its current size, we need to use a geometry reader here. So I'm gonna delete this mask real quick. And let's first add a geometry reader. Open the brackets, geometry in. And I just did a video on geometry reader a couple videos back. If you missed it, definitely go watch that. We did a lot of really cool stuff in there. And this is another example of why the geometry reader is so powerful. Inside the geometry reader, we're going to add a Z stack. And the reason we're adding a Z stack is because I want to use the alignment and make it dot leading because I want to always push the rectangle to the left side of these stars. And that's where I want it to start from. So dot leading, open the brackets, and then let's put the rectangle on the foreground color inside. Okay, so we're back. We still have a real rectangle, and now let's just adjust the width of the rectangle using the geometry. So here we'll say dot frame, and we'll add width, and let's start it equal to maybe 200, just so you can see that now we can change the width of this rectangle. If I put it to 100, try again, it now gets a little smaller. All right, and so we're just gonna change the width based on the rating. And we want the width to be the current rating. So four divided by uh, five, because we know there are five slots here. And then times the full width. So if it was, so four fifths of the full width. So what we can do is rating divided by five times geometry dot size dot width. And we're gonna get a quick error here because this rating is is of type int and we actually need it to be a CG float. So let's just add CG float and then put the rating inside there. So now we can see that the, the rectangle is filling up the correct amount because we have one star remaining. If I change this rating to two and update the simulator or sorry, the preview on the canvas, we should now see that the rectangle is covering two of the stars. And now that we have our rectangle working, this overlay view, let's create a pro let's create another variable to hold that. So we'll create a private var overlay 
view of type sum view open brackets let's put the geometry reader the z stack the rectangle inside that overlay view and then we can put this back here so overlay view if we click resume it should look the exact same and then finally all we need to do is mask this overlay view to the stars view so we'll call it dot so we'll add dot mask stars view all right and i'm going to make this look a little cleaner because we have a bunch of different lines here so this just needs to be one line i'm going to make this all one line so our code is so nice and clean and short i absolutely love it uh, and now all we need to do is update for that animation so let's set the rating back down to zero and let's resume the canvas and if i start clicking on some of these stars you gotta click play on the on the live canvas and if i click number one it now highlights yellow and we're using the mask and if i go to three it should update and if i go to five it should update but now we have one quick problem if i go back down to number three it doesn't let me click it and that's because when we're clicking on it now we're actually clicking on the overlay layer because that's on top of the stars view layer so the problem is so the problem is that the tap gesture is on the stars view and since we have an overlay we can't actually we're not actually tapping on the stars view we're tapping on the overlay and there is no tap gesture so we could add another tap gesture here but there's actually a better solution and that is to basically just remove the ability for users to click on the overlay layer so on this geometry reader i'm going to add dot allows hit testing and if I read that, let me go back, allows hit testing, configures whether this view participates in hit test operations. Basically means allowing users to click on it. So if I set it to false, now users cannot click on the overlay layer, but they will still be able to click on the stars view because it will go, this will basically be transparent and they'll only be clicking on the stars view. And lastly, and here's the magic, I want to update this tap gesture so that when we update the rating, we do it with animation. So let's do with animation dot ease in out, open brackets and put the rating here. And now we have our complete code and I want to really, I want to refresh this and I'm going to zoom in here to hopefully you guys can see how cool this is. This is a very professional looking rating animation. Now when I click it, it animates from the left to the right uh, and fills in the stars. So our mask layer is basically changing the width and this looks really, really professional. So play around with this. I hope you guys see how cool this mask feature is. We basically just added five stars on the first layer. Then we added a rectangle on the top and we masked the rectangle to the bottom layer, to the star layer. And then we're just animating that rectangle on top so that it goes from smaller to larger. I think it is just awesome. You can do some really cool things with this. For example, uh, these stars, when you add a foreground color, it, you can only add one very basic color, like the gray color. But since we're using a rectangle for the overlay, we can actually customize that rectangle. And if you followed my video on rectangles, you can add all kinds of cool gradients in there. So where we have this foreground color of yellow, instead of making it a foreground color, we can do dot fill. And I'm gonna add maybe a linear gradient, open the parentheses, and let's just keep the basic gradients that's there. So red to blue, starting on the left, ending on the right. And I did a whole video on gradients, so you could do that on your own time. But if I resume this now, we have this really cool uh, red to blue. So you can play around with this and get some really cool effects with just a little bit of lines of code now that you know how to use the mask component. All right, everyone. Thank you guys for watching. As always, I'm Nick. This is Swiffle Thinking, and I'll see you in the next video.